All right, we've got questions from Instagram. Um, I'm going to start with someone because I need to ask Jesse if you know this person. Uh-oh. Sarah Gorham. I do. So I, Sarah I was here in Sweden. Okay, Sarah was at Onyx Camp with yeah, us. Yeah, she was. Um, she, goes, <laughs> she goes, what's your favorite food? Oh, Is this geez. leading to a story? No, I just, I'm, a, I'm really into food. Okay, um, so tell me more. My dad, tell, tell you more. Um, my family owns two Italian restaurants, actually. That's um, awesome. Yeah, so my dad's dad. It's where are they? In one's in Lakeland, Florida, which is where I'm from. And then the other one's in Boca Grande, which is two hours south of Lakeland, I guess. Will that be close to where we're going to be for preseason camp? Close in north south reference, but it's on the other side of the state. Oh, uh, yeah, that's so, not close. So, not, that so close. not somewhere we can go for dinner. Probably not. Okay, but but Damn. it's cool because it's it's on an island. It's there's like six restaurants on the island, so it's like oh, a fun. That's awesome. It's a fun little. So can you cook? Like, are you can you make I mean, Italian food? I, I mean, I think I, I think I'm a good cook, but um, I think I like all food, so I'm happy eating anything. All right. Um, but yeah, favorite food? I don't even know. Um. What's your, let me ask this. What's your favorite thing on the menu at your parents' restaurant? Oh, uh, definitely the Parmesan crusted grouper. Ooh. So that's that just, sounds good. Wow. It's just, I mean, we don't really do. We got a lunch break after this, right? <laughs> All right, good. We don't really do anything like extremely fancy. It's just mm. like quality, good servings, homey, hearty food. So it's, it's tasty. That sounds great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I was very hungry before this podcast. Yeah. This is not helping. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. What is for both of you? What is your favorite Starbucks drink from the secret menu? You're, you're, you're hesitating. Like it's a secret. Uh, uh, like, no, I, it's a secret menu, but I apparently mean, we all know it exists. I, really I don't know. I only go to Starbucks if I have a gift card. Okay. Um, Are you a Dunkin' person? I prefer actually the taste of Dunkin' over okay. Starbucks. But you're not like Joanna. No, I'm not like okay. Joanna. But she's, who is? Yeah. She's, she's a maniac. With I like McDonald's coffee a lot too. Okay. But um, from Starbucks, I don't even know what's on the secret menu. I don't either. I've had Does anyone have any secret menu knowledge? We I have like way too many people in this room and none of us know about the secret menu. I, I had one. Fantastic. One time I was sick. There was some like tea, lemonade, mm. some sort of combination that... I looked up online, best sick drink at Starbucks, and that's, <laughs> it sent me to the secret menu, so that's the only experience I have with that. Brooke, do you have any? No, any? I don't think I'm elite enough to know the secret <laughs> menu. Like, I'm more of like a black coffee type. Okay. You just go and get the coffee, and you're out. That's it. We don't need no stinking secret menu. We just get coffee. I mean, now I'm coffee. interested, honestly. But I am, too. I don't know. Maybe that's a field trip. <laughs> all this is, see, that's the problem. You do anything around idea. me, it becomes a content idea. <laughs> uh, all right, who is someone that inspires you, and why? <laughs> um yeah that's a tough one i think i think there's a lot of inspiring people around us especially in um you know the sport but i think just anyone who's pretty resilient and has been through something i mean everyone's been through something but that can just keep getting up this you know the next day and getting after it i agree i think in women's soccer especially like you hear so many stories of people just having to work their way up or fight through something else, like an injury or, or, I don't know, having to move a million places or being told you can't do something and then they do it and they prove them wrong. And I think like most of your teammates that you meet have some story like that. And I think it keeps you going because you want to stay with them, you know? Yeah, I think that's something that I've learned definitely being around the sport more over the last year and last six months of it especially. It's just everyone's story is mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so with that in mind, what are, what is there something that like – you think about your story that is that is something that you like man that that was a critical point for me that's something that i had to overcome um yeah i think for me i grew up in like a smaller town and it's not really like a soccer place like if you're from georgia if you you go to like north atlanta to play usually mm. and i'm from south atlanta so the opposite but um i think it was never really a dream of mine until like i got further up and I met people and then I think I had to overcome like the small town mentality. When did you realize you were really good? Because if you're playing in this league, you're really good. See, I never, I never did. I was just like, I just kept like moving up slowly because I, I took a year off, year and a half off after college. And then I oh, was wow. like, I'm going to go on trial. I didn't make it in Holland. And so then I trained with this guy, Alex Palma in Atlanta for like a while, like half a year. And then I just kind of slowly working my way up through the leagues in Europe and then into that up here. Jesse, what about you? Um, for me, it'd probably just be injuries and various things I've gone through health-wise for that. Um, 
you know, I don't need to sit here and list them all, but I've had my fair share of surgeries. So I think just keep going and seeing what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, when you're in those moments, like who are the people that you lean on? Who's your, who's, who are the people that, that have kept you going? Uh, uh, go ahead. <laughs> my parents, I think, have helped so much, like my family, just because they've always believed I could do it even when I couldn't. And they helped me to like make the steps in order to get where I need to be. And they've always just been there to support me. Um, probably, I mean, in the soccer world, everyone's, you know, gone through some injury, minor, major. Um, so I think it's like for me, you know, the monotonous days of rehab and it's just the people who you're with every day or like in the training room who are doing, you know, rehabbing something else, but it's still tedious stuff. And you're just like, yeah, here we are. I'm getting after it. Yeah. <laughs> so. So when she, you said that you never really had the, the dream that, like, this is where you'd wind up, when, when did that become a reality? And then, then just for you, like, when did you know, like, I think I can play at the, the highest level in the world? Um, yeah, I mean, I think every little kid wants to be, like, well, I, in my generation, wanted to be Mia Hamm, basically. So, like, I semi had the dream, but then, like, the league went away. Mm -hmm. And then, like, so I just, like, didn't think it was a reality for me until I was applying for school a graduate school for prosthetics and orthotics and I was like my heart is just not in this and I was <laughs> like I need to go play so then I kind of realized it was going to be a thing when I was able to like play and then be noticed and then move up again and then every time I moved up I kind of realized okay I can do this like here I am um because you, you were playing on like youth national teams and stuff so. yeah um my freshman year and freshman sophomore year in college I was with the 20s um but I think before that it was just kind of like my mindset was we'll see where soccer can take me like just keep riding the wave um but you know and through injuries I was like obviously I don't know you know I haven't played this is the highest level I'll be playing at and since the U20 stuff really probably um so it'll probably you know, we're, we're still seeing. We'll yeah. see where it takes me, I guess. Exactly. Yeah, we will find out. Right yeah. now it's taking you to this table, uh, but you have to get up because you have to go to practice now. So, or you have to go work or whatever, whatever, yeah, whatever the proper term is for whatever you're about doing. to do. Uh, you have to go do something other than talking to these microphones. Uh, we'll do this again sometime later in the year. Um, I think Jess, you and I are going to have to do just an Italian food episode. Okay. Uh, and Brooke, we'll find something else for us to talk about. Uh, okay. Not. I lived in Italy, so I think I should be a part okay. of that. Oh, okay, done. I played done. in Italy, so I'm okay. in for the yeah. Italian. Jess and Brooke, episode two, will be completely yeah. Italian and okay. we'll do a better job of, of making sure that we know what countries we need to reference before the podcast instead of stumbling on them midway through. Uh, thank you. Appreciate yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.